You are the owner of number three, Orchard Lane, Orton Laskern. I am. I'm running it as a bed and breakfast place. Among your guests was a certain Dr Fletcher and his wife. Yes, they were my first. Very courteous and respectable, I must say. You're not as respectable as you think. Dr Fletcher was a Mr Ian McKidd and his wife was a Mrs Dorrit. What? Mr Dorrit is now suing Mr McKidd for damages related to adultery. <gasps> you may be called upon to testify. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Oh. There is some concern that Orton Laskern will be in the news as a site of a house of ill repute. <gasps> a house of ill repute? I'm afraid the rumour mill has already begun. Oh. But there's a chance that Dorrit may settle out of court. I'll keep you informed. Thank you, Sergeant. Hello. What brings you here? Oh. Mrs Patmore's the one to ask. A house of ill repute? Thomas is lovely, isn't he? He's funny and handsome. And he's got such lovely teeth. He's not for you, Daisy. Of course not. He's too good for me, I know that. No, he's not too good. What then? He's not the boy for you and you're not the girl for him. Isn't that what I just said? And why would he be when he's seen and done so much and I've been nowhere and done nothing? Perhaps Thomas has seen and done more than is good for him. He's not a ladies' man. Well, isn't it a blessed relief? Daisy, Thomas is a troubled soul. I don't know what you mean, Mrs Patmore. No, nothing. I don't mean anything. Except if I don't get the ice cream started, they'll be dining at midnight. Where's the butter for the pancakes? It's in the cold larder. Are we having pancakes tonight? Are we echoes like? Upstairs dinner, crepe Suzette. <gasps> I've always wanted to try those. Could you save me some? If they don't finish them all. Uh, save you some crepe Suzette. If you don't mind. What are we having? Lamb stew and semolina. Do you eat a lot of stews? Don't you fancy that, dear? Not all the time. Oh, I see. Um, would you like to sleep in her ladyship's bedroom while you're at it? Wouldn't mind. I ain't sharing a room. I didn't in my last place. There were only two maids and a cook. I'm just saying. And I'll just say if you don't look out. Well, that's that then. Do you know? When you brought up that basket, I was so proud of you, I felt like crying out. If you were my own daughter, I couldn't be prouder than I am now. How long will you wear them? A week or so, but I can see much better already, even with them on. Thank heaven. Now, we need to talk about the garden party. Mrs Bird and I have made some lists. <laughs> Mrs Bird? Oh, I think we can manage without any help from Mrs Bird. Can you? Well, if you want your garden party to be run by a blind pew, that's your business. Mrs Patmore, there's a lot to be done and you're only just up on your feet. We really cannot manage without Mrs. Bird. If you say so. Now, I've been checking the stores and I've ordered what you'll need for the baking. That's very kind, Mrs. Hughes, but uh, I believe we should check the stores when it's convenient. Mrs. Bird, at Downton Abbey, the housekeeper manages the store cupboard. But I I've think never find... not run my own store cupboard in my life. Separate the cook from the store cupboard. Where's the sense in that? How long have I been saying this, oh Lord? We're the ones who cook it. We should be the ones to order it. Mrs Bird, I shall be very happy with your help with the garden party. <laughs> I'm sure we can manage it easily. Between the two of us. 